Hey everybody, welcome to the Healing Place Church Daily Devotional Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us for these Christmas devotions. We are so pumped, we're excited to continue our journey. We're going to be looking at this Old Testament prophecy today, and it's found in the book of Micah. And it's in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and it says this, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Check this out. Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. This is an important prophecy from the Old Testament, and it's predicting uh, the birth of the Messiah. Now, this is what's crazy about this, and this is how amazing God is. Not only does God tell us that we're going to have a Messiah, and he talks about the Messiah hundreds and hundreds of years before the Messiah, but he's even going to name the city in which he's born. Now, this would have been impressive if this was just a hundred years before the birth of Christ, but this was 750 years. Think about that. 750 years, God is going to name the city of the Messiah's birth. You think, man, a lot can happen in 750 years. In 750 years, man, who knows what cities will exist? But yet God knows that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, and he knows that the city is going to endure. And what's crazy to even think about is this was not some big metropolis. This wasn't Rome or a New York or a San Francisco. It wasn't even a Baton Rouge. This is more like a Prairieville. This is more like a really small suburban town. And the fact that it would even endure that many years is a miracle in and of itself. But here, the Bible is going to tell us that the Messiah is going to be born in the city of Bethlehem. Now, there are actually two Bethlehems in the, in the nation of Israel. There's one in the north and there's one in the south. And he doesn't just say Bethlehem and, okay, well, which one is it? He says it's Bethlehem. Ephrathah, which is the one located in the land of Judah. Now, this is an important city in the Bible um, because really it gets its most notoriety in the Old Testament because it's known as the city of David. David, King David, was born here. He was raised here. His father Jesse and his brothers, they're all from Bethlehem. And so he's from this small town. And so this is important because uh, it is connecting Jesus to the birthplace of his ancestor, King David. Now, I want to talk to you for a second about what the name Bethlehem actually means, and it's pretty cool when you stop and think about it. Bethlehem literally means in the Hebrew, a house of bread, house of bread. It was a city known for its bread manufacturing, and so they were. Uh, there were a lot of people who baked bread in that city, so much so that they named the city after the commerce. And so it's super cool when you stop and think about the fact that Jesus says this about himself. In John chapter 6, verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. It's so fitting to think that Jesus, who is the bread of life, would come from the city known as the house of of bread. Why is bread so important? Because bread was a basic metaphor for the basic needs of life. And so we understand that Jesus, and this, even the name of the city of Bethlehem is pointing to Jesus's mission, that he is our bread. He is our source. He is what sustains us. Two other things I want to point out from this verse that I think is pretty cool is that you see something really unique here, that great things can come from these small places. You know, if I'm God and I'm thinking about all the cities to, to deliver my son to the world, the promised Messiah, 700 years, I'm going to pick the city out, I'm going to name the city, I'm probably going with Jerusalem. I mean, Jerusalem, that was the capital. That was the city that, that David set up as his capital, and everybody flocks to Jerusalem. It's, it, this Jerusalem held the temple of God. It was this sacred city, but God chooses Bethlehem. And this is so cool because what we see is something unique about God is that he can take something small and use it in a great, mighty way. Today, if you go to Bethlehem, it's a much bigger city, but it's a bigger city today because of the story of Jesus. 
it used to be this small rural town. And you know, the Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. No matter what you're going through in your life, no matter how big or how small, God has the ability to use small, seemingly insignificant things, seemingly insignificant moments in our lives and use them in massive ways. But another thing I want to point out here, and this is this is just the fun doctrinal side of me. It says this, yet a ruler of Israel whose origins are in the distant past. In Hebrew, this phrase origins in the distant past, it literally means who's from the ancient of days, who is from eternity past. So what's interesting is this prophecy is confusing, and it confused a lot of scholars uh, up until the time of Christ because it's saying, hey, the Messiah is coming. He's going to be a descendant of David. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. Check, 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 understand that. But that's not where he gets his beginning. His beginning does not originate in Bethlehem. His origins date beyond what we understand as time. And that's what the scripture is trying to communicate. God is telling the prophet Micah, and he's telling the people through the prophet that, okay, the Messiah is coming to Bethlehem, but that's not where he starts. He was before Bethlehem. He's always existed. He's existed eternally with the Father. He's existed eternally with the Holy Spirit. And this is so important for us to understand because, you know, if you're like me, you maybe you've got a little manger set right there uh, on a shelf in your house or right above your fireplace. And we have one. We put it out every single year. We love to look at it. And we think about Bethlehem and we think about that manger scene. But you know what's crazy is Jesus was always there long before Bethlehem. And long after Bethlehem will be around, Jesus is from eternity past. And this was a mystery to the scholars because how could he have an origin yet not have an origin? And it's not until we hear the story in Luke chapter 1 about the incarnation of Christ that we begin to understand and begin to wrap our minds around who this person is. How can he be the Messiah yet be eternal? And we understand it only because of the story of Christmas. So here's two quick uh, little applications for you today. I think the first one is this. Reflect on God's sovereignty. You think about a God who not only has foreknowledge, not only did God know what city uh, his son would be delivered in, not only does he have foreknowledge, but he has controlling sovereign power. He, has, he made sure that this city would endure for 750 years just to deliver the Messiah. How amazing is that? If he can orchestrate that level of events over that long of time, he can orchestrate your life in a way that you couldn't even possibly understand. God is so much more powerful. He's so much more all-knowing than you could ever dream. And then the last application I want for you is, is this, is remember that God can use the small things in your life in really big ways. Small acts of obedience, small moments in his presence. He can turn those around and create these magnificent things out of. Don't despise something because it's small to your eyes, because God can use it in a massive way. And I believe he wants to do that in your life today. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this amazing prophecy. Lord, it blows our minds how, how you could announce the Messiah's birthplace hundreds and hundreds of years before it even happened, yet you can make it happen because your word does not fail. And Lord, I just pray for every person watching today, every person listening today, if they're having a small little moment or an insignificant moment with you, I pray that they wouldn't despise it. I pray that they would pay attention to it. They would lean in knowing that you can take them from the small, the still moments and make great things happen. Thank you for the story of Christmas that teaches us that great things can come from small places. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.